Hi everybody, I hope all of you uh, are doing well. Uh, today uh, we have a <coughs> class about psycholinguistics. In a previous session, we talked about the main element in psycholinguistics. And I want to uh, go through a new topic. Uh, I've recorded the sessions. I hope all of you can use it well. And if you have any problem, you can contact me and ask your own question. Uh, for today, sorry, there is an interruption in that. Okay, today uh, we want to talk about uh, serial versus para processing. I hope you had my voice uh, best quality. Uh, serial versus para. Uh, sorry for these interruptions. I had an error on my page, uh, but no, I want to see you. Um, as in previous sessions, we talk about the main topic of uh, psycholinguistic. Today, we want to talk about serial versus parallel processing. Uh, the second main important issue uh, also related to information flow is whether an individual processes uh, relates to language need to completely finish before uh, further processing can happen, or whether process related to the same information can overlap. In the uh, serial uh, processing, each step must be finished before the next can begin. And that is why we call it serial. The first step must finish, and then another one will start. Uh, and, uh, in parallel processing, as its name shows, steps may overlap so that one process may not be completely finished before the next one is begin. So we call them parallel. For example, say that we are trying uh, uh, to determine the meaning of a word we are hearing. Uh, do we search through a mental list of words and trees, considering and rejecting until we get to the word that match uh, what we are hearing, for example, a serial approach? Or no, uh, in, a, in the other hand, uh, whether do we somehow keep all possible words in mind at once and considering them all at the same time until one of them becomes the clear winner a is a parallel approach. Or assuming we have gotten the right word, for instance, uh, do we need to completely finish the word selection process before turning to placing the word within the sentence structure, or can we begin to build a structure before we are completely certain what the word is? Uh, these are the main questions. And uh, the other one is aspect in psycholinguistics is automatic versus controlled processing. We want to talk about it. Another key issue, in fact, we can say is whether a particular process is automatic or controlled. Uh, 
In general, psycholinguistics have established that we handle information using a finite set of resources. Some process tag these resources may, um, more than others. Automatic process are those that do not tax resources very much. And they are, uh, autom they are uh, performing automatically or as a whole, they are going to be unintentional and uncontrollable, efficient and also very fast. And you know this uh, the rapid uh, quality of the automatic process is very important. Uh, one commonly uh, exam uh, commonly cited example of an aut automatic process is our ability to roughly estimate the frequency of events. If we are asked whether red cars are more common than yellow cars you would be able to easily say that the red car are more frequent, even though you are probably never stood out on a street and made a tally. In terms of language, understanding language sound is largely done by automatic process. It means uh, we automatically, as a speakers or hearer of language, uh, automatically can recognize each sound. Okay, and uh, so these both of these process um, understanding and production, both of them are uh, somehow uh, automatic process. Controlled process, in contrast, are those process that uh, are not required, don't require most resources in our uh, slower, uh, they, their speed is somehow low and can be subject to strategic effects. Uh, let me give an example. Imagine trying to learn how to play a new musical instrument, as the writer said. At first, you will need to pay close attention to coordinate your hand movement to produce the sounds. This is control process. Why? Um, at least at first, it can become automatic through the practice, but at the first stage, it is not automatic process. It is controlled. Building up the structure of a sentence is also largely a control pro process. When you are learning a language for the first time, which you are not acquainted with it before, uh, it's uh, time consuming for you. And at the first stage, it's not, uh, uh, in fact, uh, automatic process. It is a control process. You have to control your uh, your uh, language productions. You have to find a proper verb, a proper subject, a proper object, and try to put these different language elements in a string, a very acceptable and, uh, in fact, uh, a good uh, mood in which a uh, meaning can be uh, inferred or uh, as a whole meaning can be transferred. The other topic uh, which uh, we want to talk about it is, uh, but uh, uh, I want to add some point here, uh, making sentence in the first stage is a uh, in fact, uh, control process, but by more practices and uh, in a case that we are talking more and more and we became a perfect speaker, this process will be changed into, uh, uh, in fact, um, change into a mm -hmm. automatic one. Uh, that is the the explanation relating to uh, automatic versus, in fact, uh, automatic versus uh, a non-automatic or control process. 
the next topic is uh, the next topic is uh, modularity the final key theme uh, or uh, in the is the issue of uh, modularity this uh, uh, in fact uh, comes into flavor first there is a degree to which individual process uh, processes within language processing are distinct and isolated from each other and the second one there is a degree to which language as a system is distinct and isolated from other cognitive system. With respect to modularity, generally, uh, further uh, uh, propose several key properties of modular or isolated process. Uh, modular processes are specific to a particular domain uh, they are not spread across multiple area. Automatic, fast, and not affected by feedback from other processes. For the uh, perspective of individual processes within language, these uh, then arise the, the questions of how much different processes interact. Uh, for example, is it possible for a processes related to uh, connecting words in a sentence to interact with a, for example, semantic processes uh, necessary to understand them? Uh, it means uh, the question is uh, how much interaction exists between a, a very specific domain in language processing? Based on the viewpoints or perspective of broader cognitive processes, there is also an outstanding question concerning the extent to which language is independent from uh, the other cognitive process. In this uh, matter, in this topic, uh, based on the, the, this uh, issue, uh, modularity means isolation. Isolations of language, the other uh, Around, the isolations of language from other cognitive ability. And the second one is, uh, in fact, uh, the isolations of a different stage in language processing. A quick, uh, if you want to have a quick overview of the rest uh, of this books, uh, as we will talk about it, uh, I can say that in this unit and in this uh, course, we will explore a set of key topics that have shaped research and give us a better understanding of how language processing works. Uh, first, however, we will go over a brief introduction of language in the in next chapter. And, and then, uh, as we have already seen, the study of language involved examining the sound the structures meanings and uh, in this chapter uh, we cover all aspects of language in a, in each uh, of these area that are most relevant to psycholinguistics and later in the next chapters we will discuss the sound of language and how different language may group the sound of a specific language and how these isolated languages will group together uh, and order these sounds, and we will also examine the internal structures of both words and sentences. Okay, uh, till here, uh, as we talk about it in, uh, up to now, it will become clear that why language is complex, is a, you know that a language is a complex topic, it follows the rules that we can define and 
uh, also used to predict what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. It means what is grammatical and what is ungrammatical in any specific language. For example, in English, we could even uh, we could uh, invent a new word like pilt, but not tilt, tilt. Uh, in chapter two, we'll examine this uh, or uh, why this is the case, for example, in English. Um, anyway, in the other chapters, step by step, we will uh, go to uh, different topics. Uh, but in uh, this chapter, chapter two, uh, we are looking at language as an object of psycholinguistics. We want to study language as a whole. In this book, we are going to talk a lot about language itself. And so it makes sense to start with an overview of some language basics or basic element or um, essential element of any language, especially uh, those elements that are relevant to uh, the different part of this book. Language, uh, as you, uh, you know, is a very complicated and complex uh, topic, but, but, uh, uh, although it is very complicated, but on the other hand, this uh, so uh, in fact, uh, and we uh, propose that six uh, and nine hundred currently spoken version that uh, or uh, by definition, mutually intelligible. And uh, you know that, that uh, speakers can have a mutual relationship with each other. Some, uh, some languages, for example, like English, Hindi, Japanese, and uh, 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 um, uh, any other language, uh, these, uh, they have, uh, in fact, we can say, have a million of speakers. In other languages, uh, they may have a fewer than 100 languages. Uh, but uh, anyway, you know, there is a different uh, in numbers of uh, a, uh, in fact, society in uh, which are uh, use this language. Some languages have clearly defined words that are that get combined into sentences, uh, whereas other other languages have long single words, for instance, uh, that carry the same meaning as in entire sentence. Um, so uh, there is a, uh, in fact, a variety or variations in the length of words and the, uh, the way in which these uh, elements combined together in uh, order to uh, carry the meaning. Uh, the, mm, in fact, the differences and complexity of language uh, combined with uh, the relative uh, rightness of modern language study. And this meant that we still do not have a complete account of how every individual language works. of language. The study of properties of language can be divided into roughly five overlapping categories. The first one, the first step is sound system. The second one is word structure. The third one is sentence structures. Later on, we study meaning. And after that, we have a real word uses. Uh, uh, so uh, we will focus primarily uh, on the first uh, uh, three, because it's in the case that uh, the insight from linguistics have been directly relevant to psycholinguistics. Uh, however, uh, we will uh, also briefly discuss uh, the meaning and other uh, level, for example, the pragmatic uh, real world meaning uh, used, uh, or, uh, and, and also uh, the major issue to consider in, in this area. The first one, which uh, we will talk about it is sound system. 
Uh, today, I want to talk about sound system of language uh, and uh, and later on, uh, we will talk about the word structures. Um, one of the um, key elements of language is a way in which the units of meaning, for example, it can be a word are composed, uh, you know, that uh, these are composed of smaller, non-meaningful segments. These segments can be combined and recombined in a potentially infinite number of ways, mm, allowing for a potentially infinite number of words. It means that it, these small parts uh, can combine in a different ways, in infinite number of ways, and create infinite number of sentences, and by means of which they can, uh, in fact, uh, uh, carry the different indefinite number of meanings too. Anyway, in spoken language segments um, in a spoken language are called sounds. Uh, as you know, each language has a set of sounds that are produced by changing the position of various parts of the vocal tracts, and each sound is created by a different quality uh, and by different, uh, in fact, uh, position in uh, or part in a vocal track. There are two important aspects of these segments. The first part is uh, mm, they have no independent meaning. So there is nothing about but, but there is a sound in language. We, we call it but, but sound in a word, for example, bird. Uh, that itself means bird. The sound are arbitrary. There is not any natural relationship between the sound which used in the word bird, for example, b -r -r -d. there is not any natural relationship between the sound and the meaning of these words. Uh, so we can say that the sound are arbitrary. Uh, other languages use different sounds, for example, for the same things. In Persian, we say parande. And it means the reason that, and that is the reason yeah, that is important is uh, it make language very flexible. So we can create new words for things using any sound in our language. For example, if we create uh, some things new, we can combine the, um, the sound in our, our language in a, in a good ma manner and uh, created a new words. The second important thing to know about a sound segment of language is they, can, they cannot be combined in any old way. They are governed by the rules that are specific, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, specific to each uh, language. There are, um, there are not uh, eight grade uh, English grammar rules uh, that must be memorized and have a thousand exceptions. These are rules that one knows unconsciously by virtue of knowing language. Any, 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 any native speakers of language knows the rules of language unconsciously and uh, they are most by definitions, uh, they don't have a random exceptions. For example, in English, it is possible to have a, for example, sound t and let together, uh, like in the word little, little, so we pronounce it as little. Uh, however, it's not possible in English for uh, for these sounds combinations to, to come at the beginning of a word. For example, t in a uh, little t and le comes in a final positions but in the first position, sleep is not possible and it's not valid word in English, though it could be in another language. For example, you may find some uh, any kind of languages that have uh, such a combinations. This is important because it means that even at the level of sound combination, language is rule governed systems. However complex it might seem at the time, it's not random. The sound system of language is actually studied in two main parts. The first part is phonetics. Phonetic, as you know, the definition of phonetic is the study of actual sound or real sound 
in any language and how they are produced. Studying is the study of actual sounds and how they are produced. Whereas we have the other term phonology. Phonology is concerned with how sounds are mentally categorized. Uh, in a phonetic, we are dealing with the study of actual sounds, how they are produced. But in phonology, we are dealing with an abstract topic, how sounds mentally categorized and the rules that govern how they can combine. That is called phonology. So uh, we start with phonetics. First of all, we can define sound of language in terms of how they are produced. Produce production or sound productions is called articulated. We can divide sound roughly between vowels and consonants with two main categories. And the sound of language the, in one hand, on the one hand we have a consonant and uh, on the other hand we have vowels. And each of these categories can be further divided according to specific parameters. For, for consonant, for example, we can define most individual sounds according to three main uh, parameters as you may study in phonetic course, place of articulation, manner of articulation, and voicing. Uh, as you know, the place of articulation refers to a place or part of a vocal tract, for example, what part of vocal tracts are involved in making the sound, for example, in sound bed, two lips comes together and make the sound uh, for example, b, whereas in deads made by placing the tongue, for example, against the alveolar reed, which is uh, uh, directly behind the top front teeth. Uh, so, uh, uh, manner of articulation the, uh, also uh, refers to more or less to the degree of uh, airflow uh, restrictions. Uh, based on the, the degree of airflow restrictions, we will produce different sounds. Uh, uh, whether the air is stopped completely, as in B and D, called stop and plosive manner of articulation, whereas only uh, highly restricted, we have a sound in which there is a high uh, the restrictions and they are highly restricted, such as in a sound Z, or fricative. And the final parameter, voicing uh, again, uh, refers to whether the vocal cords in a larynx uh, uh, are vibrating or not. If they are vibrating, they will uh, produce as um, uh, voiced sounds, otherwise we are dealing with uh, voiceless sound. As you can, uh, you can uh, feel the vibration of uh, vocal uh, uh, for uh, by putting the tip of your finger uh, on your neck. Vowels are, uh, are somewhat uh, different from consonant. Again, uh, first of all, uh, with uh, while consonants may be voiced or voiceless, uh, vowels uh, as a whole are voiced. Uh, there is no exception. And also airflow through the vocal tract is not uh, constricted uh, and the way is uh, free and they are freely uh, comes out of uh, mouth. The French vowels are produced by changing the uh, position of tongue in a mouth and rounding uh, the lips and the uh, vowels tend to be louder and longer than consonants. Mm, not every language makes use of every possible sound. Uh, for example, English doesn't have a by, for example, by labia fricative can, cannot be found in English, although in any other languages you can find it. And uh, Since you have become acquainted with these topics in your phonetic course, I don't want to go through the details. And you know that there is a system uh, for uh, showing uh, uh, all the possible consonants and vowels of language uh, that is called uh, IPA, uh, that is a, a system of symbols uh, for showing the different segments 
uh, potential segments of sound which can be produced by human beings. However, there are some other parameters that can be applied to consonant, and in the end there are uh, over, uh, for example, 100 possible consonants available for language use, 100. And uh, there are fewer vowels within, with about 25 different possibilities. 500 consonant, but 25 possibilities. So the number of vowels is, uh, is uh, somehow less than the number of consonant. It's about uh, one fourth of uh, this amount. In addition to uh, transcribing sounds using a special alphabet, the other way that one could write down uh, uh, or visualize the sounds that we produce for a language is show what the sound wave of a sound look like or examining the sound wave. Uh, these are called a spectrogram and uh, provide a way of looking how the small change that uh, we make uh, in our vocal track impact on actual sound that we will produce. A spectrogram basically show how loud or quiet all the different frequencies in human voices. It will examine the different features and different uh, 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 varieties uh, of frequencies in human voices, uh, which are in fact in a speech unfold. For example, for vowels and certain bands, frequencies become notably louder than others. And we can use the relative spacing between these bands uh, to help identify the vowels. Uh, the next topic is phonology. I will discuss about phonology in short. Uh, as uh, I talk about uh, phonology, uh, describing, you know that, uh, describing the way language sounds work in the uh, above make the whole system sound fairly straightforward, but there are in fact a number of complicating issues with understanding the speech sounds. Mm. Phonetics is principally concerned with uh, physical sound of language, whereas, uh, as we have uh, talked about it, whereas phonology is concerned with the rules uh, that different languages apply to these different sounds, including how physical um, sound maps onto linguistic uh, categories of sounds for a given language. Language often group together similar sounds into a single sound category uh, called a phoneme. Uh, to better understand, uh, let's start with some complex words, little talk and stop. Most speaker of English, when uh, asked if uh, there is a common sound that is shared by all these words, will say, yes, it's the t sound. However, in fact, the sound that English speakers uh, hear as t, for example, in this example, is actually different in each of the words, regardless of the speakers. For example, in Lidl, the t sound is formed by briefly tapping the tip of tongue against the alveolar ridge. In Kitten, T is uh, formed by briefly constricting airflow at the voice box or in the uh, larynx. And the T in the spot is, uh, as you know, is, is, uh, there is not any vibration. Uh, and T in a little, uh, but importantly, from T in a, for example, a stop, because it uh, occurs with a short puff of air at the end. This seems like a trivial differences, but uh, in some languages like Hindi, the difference with a puff of air, or we call it uh, aspirated t, uh, and the t with a little puff of air uh, that is unaspirated. Uh, 
Uh, these different sounds uh, that all form a single phoneme are called allophones. So if uh, you want to know what allophone means, the different sounds that all uh, form a single phoneme, different sounds, uh, all of them together create a single phoneme is called allophones. Uh, uh, thus, in some sense, uh, phoneme is uh, like a category of similar sounds. So part of knowing the language is being able to immediately and correctly uh, place allophone into the phonetic category. In other words, we need to be able to identify a sound and how the uh, uh, what category of other similar sounds it get grouped within. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. So I will keep the topic till here. Thanks a million for your attention. Uh, I hope you have a good time. If you have any uh, problem uh, about these topics, you can uh, contact me and I will and be happy to answer to your own questions. I will stop the record here and thanks for your attention. Have a nice time. Bye.